So beautiful. Thank you for that blessing this morning. Gosh. I wanted to share a video with you to start out this morning. It's called 10 Ways to Shift Your Thoughts. I know that we have some new folks, some folks who are new to Unity, and even those of us who are not new, who have been doing this for a very long time, still look for guidance and inspiration in videos and music and reading. So I'm actually going to talk about shifting our thoughts this morning. I'm just not going to talk about all 10 of these, but let's go through them together here and see. 10 ways to turn a negative into a positive. Beware the spiritual bypass. Resist turning away from pain and drama. We were made for these times. Words have power. Events, people or situations are not inherently good or bad. Stay open to the possibility that what you have labeled bad will be redeemed. Stay grounded. Stop dwelling on the worst that might happen. Stay in this moment. Make a gratitude list. Get the facts. Find reputable objective sources of information. Facts are neutral. Only our reaction creates drama. Focus on ultimate goals. We all want the same things. Peace, prosperity, and wellness for all. Look past appearances and keep your eyes on the prize. Look for a growth opportunity. If you judge another's behavior, consider ways you might be doing the same thing. Find what you are for. You don't have to save the world, just take small steps. Align with spirit before deciding how to take action. Go global. Focus on your heart's warm light and imagine it growing brighter until you enfold the planet with love. Know the bigger picture. You might not see it yet, but something magnificent is unfolding. Notice every thought, what we hold in mind influences the whole. What are you contributing to the one mind today? So, um, I'd like to start first to tell a little bit of a story about a woman and her grandmother. Grandmother's very, very religious, and um, but very forgiving. They're sitting on the porch together, and they're discussing a particular family member. He's just no good, said the young woman. He's completely untrustworthy, not to mention lazy. Yes, he's bad, the grandmother said, as she rocked back and forth in her rocker. But Jesus loves him. I'm not sure of that, the younger woman persisted. Oh, yes, assured the elderly lady. Jesus loves him. She rocked, and she thought for a few more minutes, and then added, of course, Jesus doesn't know him like we do. <laughs> This, this particular, what I want to read to you next, was a submission to the Metropolitan Diary back um, in 1997. It was printed in the New York Times. Dear Diary, an older friend recently returned from her hometown in North Carolina. Says that they've spruce, spruced up the churchyard cemetery since her last visit several years back. She says there's lots of new greenery and that families are together now. Together, I asked. Well, years ago, they never much worried where they buried someone because everyone was a neighbor anyhow. They'd just dig a grave wherever it seemed to balance things, but they've redone it 
so people are with their children and their grandchildren instead of scattered about. You mean they exhumed all those people and buried them again? Oh no, she said, they just shifted the headstones. <laughs> and everyone agrees it looks so much nicer. <laughs> I'm looking for a shift, but I'm looking for a deeper shift, a much deeper shift. You've heard that expression, shift happens. <laughs> yes, I was very careful, you noticed that, because we are all familiar with the other happenings too, from which shift happens came from. But there is a lot of shift going on. <laughs> Have you noticed that? And there's a lot of the other SH going on too. I can tell. So the question is, are you ready to shift? Because we are here for that shift. They've been talking about, you know, that the lion is going to lay down with the lamb, and, and we're all like looking and saying, no, it's not. <laughs> not anytime soon anyway, not in my lifetime. But we are here because we've been created for these times. Have you noticed that, that the world, that life seems to, or maybe it's just me, but it seems to be getting more complicated? So there are, it's, I'm not the only one, okay? Some other people who feel like life is more complex. So what is your story of how life is complex? <laughs> well, I want to tell you my story. <laughs> Hold on a minute, because we seem to have a very hot mic. That still seems, it's too close. Oh, maybe that's, is it still on? Don't mind me, I'm just, it is on as a matter of fact. Maybe that will help. Where was I? Thank you. So the beginning of this year, we were in uh, the Shrine Building every every Sunday and after 20 plus years meeting at the Mojave Shrine Club, the Shriners in February said, we're going to use the building for other purposes on Sunday. So in other words, see ya. <laughs> and, um, but they said, but you have six months. And if you've ever looked for a house or property or whatever, you know that six months really isn't very long. So talk about a shift in our intentions, our purposes, our day-to-day -day lives. We were, it all became about where we were gonna be in, in six months. So that's half the year right there. If you ask me what I did for the first half of 2022, that's what I did because um, yes, of course, we ate and we slept some and, uh, you know, there were other things in between, but our intention and our focus was always on where would we be in six months. Then it was July and we decided on this place and they, they, they told us that we could take early possession and we did and some of you saw this place before we got in here and started doing work it was basically demolition it was gutted it was um, a mess and so there was a lot of work in that process of getting it to be like it is today and thank you for because I know that we were not holding intention alone you were holding that intention too. You brought about this space here 
in consciousness, in manifesting together, all of us, over years and years, because we've been working on this a long time, haven't we? Yeah. And probably if the Shriners wouldn't have said, see ya, we'd still be there. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. So thank you, so thank you, Mojave Shriners, <laughs> for giving us the boot. <laughs> for giving us the boot. And then, we got, um, let's see, we were going to move in. The move-in date had to be September, well, before September 1st. And, and then most of you know that right around that time is when my dad decided to make his transition um, to the great beyond. And so there was all that that entailed, and that became, you know, it was, it's just a, you know what it's like to have a laser focus? You know, when you're just laser focused. And so it was all about dad and mom and, and that whole process. And, and then September 1st, here we, we were. And, and so then it was an ongoing preparation. Do you see where the challenging and the difficult and what seems impossible and even intolerable at times, we, if we don't hide from it, if we don't give up and run scared, turns into something good. And, and we call that conscious evolution. It's not just la, 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 here we go. No, we, we must be consciously thinking about what is next for us individually and, and collectively. So what I want to say about my story, um, because now we're, we're wrapping up the year, it's already almost the, um, you know, the holidays and, you know, what we always say about the holidays. Well, now it's the holidays, which means nothing else gets done, right? Um, so I want to offer, Barry and I, want to begin to offer more here in this beautiful new space. And one of the things that we are going to be doing, we'll talk about in a little bit, but I want to get back to the 10 ways to shift our thinking. Because it seems like a simple thing, and we've said it a zillion times on Sunday mornings and in every other classes, and how many of us have it down? so that it's never an issue to have to shift. Okay, not nobody, <coughs> including me and Barry. So I was very interested in what these 10 um, ways of shifting our thoughts are. So the first one that I, that I want to offer this morning, they're not necessarily in the order of the article that I read them, but, um, Consider that events, people, situations are not inherently good or bad. So if Barry and I and the board and you and all would have decided that we were victims of the Shriners' decision to have us move, then where would we be? If we decided that they were bad for the decision that they made, where would we be? Yeah. And so it's very easy to go there, though, isn't it? So let me tell you another story, a current story. The gentleman that we came in contact with when we were still over, I'll just call it over there, <laughs> over there, he did some work helping us with our dingo boards and all. And that process has turned out, that started in 
July or August, and it's continuing. And we've been kind of frustrated with that. In fact, if you look at this, the, the image here on the screen, it's really, yeah, it's not, it's keystoning that thing that you, you know, and it's not entirely focused either. And so it's related to the work that he's still doing for us. And so when Barry uh, left a message for him and said, we're wondering when you're going to be able to come back next, and he said November 4th. Um, meanwhile, you know, it's already been uh, several months. And am I, like, gritting my teeth as I smile? <laughs> um, but... He also shared when he said November 4th that he is being tested for MS. That he's having problems getting up and down ladders, which is exactly what his full-time job is. And it just so happens that his father, who was his business partner, also died uh, recently. And so when you know what's going on below the surface, you might be able to understand better and we might be able to have and I might be able to have greater compassion and, and understanding and patience because that's what I keep going back to with my frustrations. But this morning, Barbara came in, I was up on a ladder here. I was getting up inside beyond the panels. Not you. Because, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and on another Sunday it was Barry. And, you know, and um, so, yeah, we've been taking our turns going up into the ceiling. And so I have to remind myself what our friend is going through and to pray uh, and to see him well that's our job Eric Butterworth who is, is just known in unity as an amazing prolific writer and minister and speaker and author he would say we need to in prayer not try to make it right but to see it rightly. And that's the hard part. And yet we don't give up. We, we keep at it. It, and it. And that is a shifting in consciousness there. That is the shift that we're wanting to make in our thoughts. So here's a, I posted this back a week or so ago, and it's so profound, I decided I wanted to share it with you this morning. And we do, um, I try to read what's on the screen, especially when it's small, because of our friends on Facebook, who may have a little difficulty seeing the screen. So it reads, venting and affirming are the same thing. But when you are venting, you are affirming what you do not want. So how many times have you said, I just have to vent. Can you listen to me? <laughs> and, you know, I'm not saying that's wrong, and, and I still do it, and Barry and I do it. We vent with each other, and we feel like, you know, justified in that. We need to do that. We need to get that stuff out. And yet, this is such a wonderful image. It's like some green stuff coming out of her mouth and onto the other person. And then when we understand that we are affirming exactly what it is that we do not want in that process, it does help again for the shift that needs to occur for us. So um, here's a tool that we can use. When we are confronted with something that we're not happy about, what if we said, that's interesting. Now, again, that's easier said than done. But when, again, we remind ourselves of the layers beneath what it is that we can see, 
and to remember what at one time looked like a travesty uh, turned into a beautiful thing. Maybe not the exact thing morphed into something better. It's not like the monster turned into an <laughs> angel, but that we made something good of it, whatever it is. So isn't that interesting? Because that opens us up, right? To consider the possibilities. What is possible in this situation? Oh, gosh. Facts versus drama. Isn't that interesting? Um, so, I'm not beyond a little drama myself. <laughs> but I don't like it. Who likes to be in the midst of, of that stuff? And more and more. So, you know, as we've been going through this process with our friend who has, you know, so much responsibility still left undone here, I have had to continually shift my thinking from being angry, annoyed, frustrated with him to saying, let us breathe and let us see what's next. Because it's not going to help to get into drama with him. It's not going to help. And Barry and I remind each other of that. In fact, Barry has needed to remind me more than I have needed to remind him about this particular situation. So thank you for being my reminder. The, um, the importance of staying grounded. And when I'm saying grounded, I'm thinking not necessarily physically, physically grounded, though that's a good thing, to become aware of the ground beneath our feet. That is very grounding. But I'm thinking about in consciousness, because that's where it's all going on, folks, right? Because on a certain day when something happens, the next thing we know, we are telling the story of how, what if, and how bad this could go, and how I'm the victim, or you're the victim, and it's all up in here. And so it can help as a way of grounding to say, where are my feet? Because very often what's happening right now in this moment is bliss. Kitty was just mentioning yesterday, she'd been through this thing about, you know, we, we, we live way out here on, um, what is it, Mon uh, McCormick. McCormick, off McCormick area, but everything's going on down here, so well, maybe we should move. But she's thinking of why not to move, too. Like, I have a pool, and I would miss my pool. So where am I right now? Wow, it's good here, right now. And then the mind goes off, and it says where you should be. Oh, I should be over here doing this. The other day, Barry, well, not long ago, Barry turned 79 and he started saying what am I doing I'm going to be 80 well you're right here moved in with my mom <laughs> I think that's why he was asking what am I doing I'm 80 I'm moving in with <laughs> my mother-in-law it's a great thing it's a great thing so here there, these are all ways that we can practice shifting our thoughts. What can I learn from this experience? And I love this. How many of you learned this way back about asking yourself or saying, if you spot it, you got it. I learned that in the 12 step programs, which simply means if you're able to see it in somebody else, apparently you got it somewhere in you too. So, um, 
Here are some questions to ask. How am I prejudiced? Because all of us are in, in, in every way we have our prejudices. How am I violent, if not physically, then expressing my anger in hurtful ways? How do I try to grab power? And nobody here does that. <laughs> have I ever spoken out and been wrong? Susan says never, <laughs> with a laugh. This is a graduate course in spiritual growth right here. And some of the spiritual practices, they call it projection. You've probably heard that too. That is a, it's a deep and powerful spiritual practice to become more aware, more conscious of the things that we see in the world, uh, owning the things that we that we see in our experience and in the world. What can I be for? Oh my goodness. Many of you know that I was a social worker for 20 some years before getting into ministry. So one of the first things I want to do is get out there with a sign. Right? That says, we should do this and don't do that. And I almost did a couple years ago. They, they were having uh, the bull, um, what is it, the, what they do with the bulls down there and the, all the way down. Anyway, <laughs> this is where we play charades. <laughs> charades, yes, where, you know, it's that place. And they're doing this. <laughs> they were doing the, the, the things to the bulls. And I was going to get out there on the sign down there on 95 and say, don't do that to the bulls. Bull fighting, is that what it was? It was some kind of a bull rodeo thing. I don't know, but it's not nice to do that. Anyway, I didn't do it because I know people. And I know when you say don't do something, they want to do it. And they want to tell you why they're doing it and why you ought to get out of their face. So, what can I be for instead of against as I look out into the world, as I look out into my life? Um, we have carpeting that needs to be replaced and rather than focusing on the fact that the landlord isn't going to replace the carpeting, I look at this amazing fireplace that we have. That we have this huge backyard where all the animals go out. Yes, even the rabbit goes out there. The rabbit and the cat and the two dogs and they run and they're happy and that I'm with my mom that I don't have to call her anymore because I can just, she's sitting, sitting right across from me or next to me or in the other room. And so that I am for. And I want to focus on what it is that I am for. Oh, this is the easy one. You know, we don't very often talk about the Bible or read scripture, but I do love this, 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. And so the invitation is when we are, and this is totally me, so I might as well just say, when I am laying in bed in the middle of the night, and I wake up and I start thinking about whatever, to begin to, to focus on the heart space, to begin to radiate that, know that I'm a divine center of love, and, and begin to radiate that love out. And again, it's, it's easy to say that, right? 
not as easy necessarily to do. But I offer it. I offer it to myself and to you this morning. So I actually already mentioned what Eric Butterworth had said about not trying to make it right, but to see it rightly. And that's the importance of thoughts. And have you ever heard the expression, I cannot afford a negative thought? Sometimes when I'm really feeling, thinking negatively, I remind myself of that. I can not only not afford this mind full of negativity right now, I can't afford one. Because one becomes two, and two becomes four, and four becomes eight. And I'm responsible for what I'm radiating in my space and out. All of this to get to, uh, to this one. Have you ever heard about the spir spiritual bypass? Something that we have uh, become aware of, is particularly in New Thought, over the last some on probably five, ten years, it's been getting some attention. And that is that we can make the mistake of, in our efforts to stay positive and to shift our thinking and to um, do the right thing, that we can actually be toxic in our positivity. We can skip over feelings. Have you ever had somebody, you know, we, you know, we've known a lot of loss in, in my family. And so we've had people come to us and say, you know, things like, well, you know, when my brother died, well, you know, my dog died. And, and so, where was I going with that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, sky passing, that um, it's easy, it's very easy to want to shift too soon, okay? The acknowledgement of the feeling, the, the acknowledgement of the fear, the anger, the sadness is important. And it's a delicate line, where do you, when do you choose to shift out? And that's got to be everybody else's. That's got to be your choice for you. Nobody can tell you when because some of us need to grieve forever about certain things. And we need to find our ways, way in that grief, live with the grief and still find joy and still find a, a meaningful and purposeful life and know that that loss still affects us years later. So the spiritual bypass I don't know where that very, very delicate line is for you. I don't even know where it is for me sometimes. I only know that at some point I want to be happy again. I want to choose joy. I want to get on with things. And I don't want drama in my life. So I do love this. This was another post that I put up the other day. And again, even saying this, I, I, you know, when I stop struggling, I float. And that's so true, isn't it? Like even when you're swimming or if you can't swim, if you stop struggling and intentionally lay back, you can float. When I stop struggling, I float, and that is the law. Breathe. So at what point do I stop struggling and float? The 
The last time I spoke, I think, I was sharing about a book that Barry and I have been reading over and over and over again. My mom, mom and I read it, and we were just going to read it over again, and then we decided, no, we'll read another Eric Butterworth book. So we're back to Discover the Power Within You, which we all have, you know, read 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago and continue to read, and we want you all to read that with us. And so what we're doing is planning for discovering the power within me in 2023. Discovering the power within me in 2023. And we see this being a, a very lengthy book study. It will be a book study, so that means that we will come and we'll be having read a certain section and we'll come and we'll talk about it. There's no teacher. Um, I'm getting more and more away from teaching because I honestly feel like I'm a student more than I am a teacher. And yes, we're all teachers and we're all students, but I, I still am saying I don't know. So when I stand up here and say, I do know, you know that it's time to set, give me the boot. Because I don't. We don't. So I'd like to close uh, with this poem by, I call it, I call him Hafiz or Hafiz. He's a 14th century Persian lyric poet. So here is Hafiz. I sometimes forget that I was created for joy. My mind is too busy, my heart is too heavy for me to remember that I've been called to dance. I was created to smile, to love, to be lifted up, and to lift others up. Oh, sacred one, untangle my feet from all that ensnares. Free my soul, that we might dance, and that our dancing might be contagious. And so it is. Let's take now what we want from this message. Or maybe it's just what we can remember from the message that we want. And let's invite it in deeper. And it may even help sometimes when we talk about opening our hearts and our minds to open our arms as a way of expanding our space and as a way of recognizing we are not limited by where we think of the mind being or the heart being. Opening all of us. We're vulnerable in that space and we may become fearful. And so we know that love casts out fear. And we breathe and we allow ourselves to be open to receive what it is that we want in terms of a shift in our lives. Because we all have a story. And we can remove the drama from the story when we stick with the facts. Oh yes, this happened. And isn't this interesting? And this is happening. And I may see this, but Here is what I'm for, and therefore what I will focus on. 
so many choices in a given day, in a given hour, even in this moment. The mind is so busy. And I remember years ago, a dear therapist of mine said, don't believe everything you think. Another important tool in our shift. Because shift is happening, whether we want it to or not, whether we know what is happening or not. All we can do is intend. What will my next moment be like based on what I'm choosing to think, what I'm choosing to do? What will my day be like based on my intention for the day. Knowing that when difficult thoughts and feelings come up, that they come to be healed. They can't be healed unless they come, unless we become aware of them. So once again, we open, we breathe, we know we're safe, and we trust. And we affirm that underlying all things on the surface is a river of goodness, a river of light and love, and that when we stop struggling, we float. And for this, we can be so, so grateful. I am grateful for the story of 2022 for me and for unity of the Mojave Valley. So grateful for you and for those who aren't able to be here today but are very much part of this community in heart and in mind. Grateful for the beautiful guest speakers that we have from time to time and that we will have in the future for the activities, the book studies, the workshops, the experiences that we will have in this space, all because of this story of 2022. I'm grateful.